Everybody stayed. Thanks very much, everybody, for staying. That's great. My name is Pete Jenkinson. Thanks for the introduction, Tonda. Um, we're talking today about the uh, the evolution of play over the next decade, um, and here I'm delighted to welcome David from Toys R Us um, to talk about what they're doing uh, in this space, and Kim from Astra. Thank you very much. Uh, so, if you could, yeah, give us a introduce yourself, sure, David. Sounds good. Uh, hi, my name is David Dibane, and I'm with uh, Toys R Us Stores USA. Uh, yes, we're back. Um, I'm excited to have joined the Toys R Us organization uh, about three or four months ago to really look into uh, how we're bringing the Toys R Us stores back. And what we did is we took a step back from um, where, uh, looking at what stores should be and thought about what makes sense for new stores moving forward. And we wanted to really create stores that were all based in experience, discovery, creativity, connection, and play are four of the big pillars of what we've done in stores. And when I talk with folks about the stores, they, they don't really know what they look like. So I thought I'd start with just a quick map. If you want to click to that, that shows. Made it work. Make it work, yeah. Happy. You can go to the next one. Uh, essentially, we'll go, the map's not there, so we'll just show the video. So maybe go back a second and I'll start over with that part before you see that. Uh, when you walk into the store, actually keep going, it's fine. We'll go with it. Um, when you walk into the stores, you, you are immediately greeted by a plush Jeffrey in the front. Then you walk in and you can go climb a tree house. There's engaging moments all throughout the store. There's lots of space for brands. We've worked closely in partnership with all the brands you see in the store to create spaces that make sense for them to really tell their story, but also a way that helps the kids and the parents and the customers coming in the store be able to discover. We have a theater in the back of the store that really is there for experiential events and workshops. Every hour of every day that the store is open, we're doing either story time or play dates or crafting projects or all kinds of exciting projects because we know that what people want is really to come into a place and be inspired to play, to have fun, and to be connected to brands. I can't wait. <laughs> there are two stores open already. so. We opened the first store uh, right before the holidays. We opened one store in the Garden State Plaza in New Jersey, and then the second store is in Houston, the Houston Galleria. So two down, a few more to come. Fantastic. So we're going to start, I'm absolutely going to stick that date in my diary. I think from, <laughs> from my point of view, like uh, kids really do want content. They expect more than just to be sold something. They want to kind of, it's not just about them kind of getting in there and having that we would like you to buy something is kind of just remembering those brands that they had such a great time with. And then at some point down the line, I'm like, I remember that brand. That were they were really nice to me and I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna revisit that online or in store and make a purchase. That's a great point too. In the store, there are lots of play pros, the teams we have working in the store and they're very highly trained. They know the products, they know the brands and they're, they're trained to listen to the kids, to the customers, to ask questions, understand what they're looking for and then present them a variety of products or, or experiences that make sense for them. Cool. Uh, Kim, tell us a little bit. My, about my first question is, did you wear that shirt to match that logo? <laughs> I wore it to match my socks. <laughs> Perfect match. Hi, everyone. I'm Kimberly Mosley. I'm the president of the American Specialty Toy Retailing Association. Our members include toy store owners. So think in terms of your neighborhood toy store. Um, locally owned and independently operated toy store. Those would be members of Astra. Um, and I love that we're talking about experiential uh, consumerism because that is what's happening. That, that is the wave of the future. It is a reality that consumers nowadays have lots of choices. Um, so when, they make a, when a, a customer makes a decision about how they're going to buy a toy, they're thinking in terms of online retailing, they, they're thinking in terms of big box retailing, and they're also thinking in terms of local, uh, shopping local. So when you're talking about putting your pants on, putting your shoes on, getting in the car, going to the store, going to a brick and mortar store, you're looking for more than just a transaction. Because I can just do a transaction online or I can just do a transaction big box, right? So I've got, an, I've got a choice. If I'm going to go through the trouble, let's say, of going to a store, I'm looking for more than just the transaction. I'm looking for the experience. And what you just heard is that Toys R Us is bringing that to uh, moms and dads and, and uh, caregivers and kids. Um, and that's one of the things that our toy stores do as well. We have the experience. So we will also, in those neighborhood toy stores, have games and kit sessions and maybe the 
uh, Easter Bunny will be there, or Santa Claus will be there, or uh, maybe there will be arts and crafts, or there will be story time. So uh, to neighborhood toy stores are also uh, going above and beyond. It's not just about transaction. It's also about experience. Um, you heard um, David talk about the folks at the Toys R Us store making sure that they have knowledge of the product. That's also what you'll find in those neighborhood toy stores. Um, those are owners of those stores, so their feet on the floor, they know their product, and they know the community, right? They know the folks that are coming in the door. They're getting to know those kids. They're getting uh, the kids of the neighborhood, and they know what they're looking for, so they're being very intentional about the kinds of products that they're putting on the shelves. One of the things that I wanted to share about Astra, um, along the lines of really caring about the community and, and providing experience, is a great story that happened uh, amongst our members. There was a kid who lost his alligator. Um, it was a stuffed alligator, and um, the, the parents tried really hard to find it, couldn't find it, lost it at the playground. Um, and they told the kid, sorry that the alligator's gone, and the kid said, it's okay, Santa will bring me another one. So now, of course, the, the parents are on a mad <laughs> dash to try to find the alligator. They're checking all these different toy stores in the area, and they find one of our toy stores, one of the Astro toy stores, um, that has it on their website, so they go to the store to purchase it, and it was out of stock. That toy store owner put a message out on our listserv, um, the Astro listserv, to all the other toy stores across the country and Canada looking for this stuffed alligator. Truly, the manufacturer had stopped making that alligator, but we had, at one of the toy stores, a person, a staff member, who collected stuffed animals and had one of those alligators in their, um, in their collection. So if you go to the next slide, you'll see a, a picture of this uh, alligator. <laughs> so um, this store went the extra mile, 500 miles actually, <laughs> to get this uh, stuffed alligator to the little guy in time for Christmas. It's a very heartwarming story. Um, but it's an example of going above and beyond that's what we're talking about, that it's not just about walking into a store and buying something. It's about the experience that you're going to get in the toy store. Let's hear it for that toy shop. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, so I, 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 as a kid, I had to, like, my relationship with the local toy shop was something I'd like Saturdays and Sundays, just go in there, hang out. Oh yeah. Just having a chat about stuff. Sure. And he'd play, they would introduce me to toys I didn't even know I was interested in and I had to, and such a good uh, uh, relationship with them. And they just, it's kind of, it's the product knowledge. It's quite easy just oh, yeah. to, to point people to stuff or sure, sure. Um, to, um, to, to bring up a brand and they just point you in that general direction. But if you kind of, you start walking and talking with a toy shop owner and you're you yeah. distracted and all of a sudden the minutes mm -hmm. turn into hours and they're mm -hmm. absolutely my favorite place to hang out. I'm probably yeah, at 49, I should not be, <laughs> at toy shops as much as I am, but I have such a great time in there. Just that, that, that relationship is key. And I think my, my, my kids also, uh, it's my youngest daughter, 90 years old, and we go to, there's a couple of toy shops in the UK where their knowledge is just above and beyond. And they spark conversations and I can just see it and it really resonates and it's quite, um, it's sure. quite emotional sure. for me a little yeah. bit. You can hear it in my voice I now, it. but it's, uh, no, it's, it's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, go that toy shop. <laughs> Um, so in terms of uh, Toys R Us, where, uh, so two stores opening when? Opened. They opened right before the holidays. All right, so okay. the first two were there. Okay, so that is going to replicate itself in terms of global domination? <laughs> well, <laughs> what, what, what we're talking about is the Toys R Us stores coming back in the U.S. because as we know, they're no longer here. And so this is a, a new organization that came together to really bring back the brand and, and really reinvent play for the next generation. Uh, that's the core of it. And so the plan right now was to open these first two stores and really learn. We have a lot of partnerships with the brands that are in the stores to really work with them to understand what's important to you, what's important to your customers, and how can we create a space that is really exciting for customers. So these are the first two. We're learning a lot and gathering a lot of data. We're a really small startup organization in that sense, so we can be really nimble and, and looking to take the learnings from these first two to kind of evolve the next few 
Um, so that's, for me, what's been exciting about it is people talk a lot about experiential and what does that mean. And I think of it, it's not just let's put a cutout that kids can take a picture in front of it. It's really how are you creating experiences that connect people in that space with what's going on? How do you deliver an experience that can't be done anywhere else? And so that's really what we're trying to put into the DNA of, of these spaces and, and using as our North Star, if you will, um, what's the customer experience in that space, right? And how do you make sure that what we're doing is delivering on those goals? Which is why we have you know, a theater space, hands-on. You walk into the front of the store and right there there's a product called Kinetic Sand. And that place is really popular. People are playing with sand in a store and you think sand in a toy, so what a mess. One, the product's not a mess, but two, people love it and they're engaging with it. And so we have lots of brand partners that have bigger spaces and smaller spaces in the store and we really work with them to design unique experiences. And we have the staff and we have the infrastructure and we have the store to really be able to deliver on that. And it, it, it is a retail space, yes. right? I, yet yes. I, visit, I must come back next yeah. week or yeah. very soon. They're stores. They're, it was interesting. When the, store, when the stores first opened, a lot of people thought, oh, is this a pop-up? Or, no. we're, we're, you know, I mean, like, no, no, we're here. We're, we're back. You know, please come. Continue to shop here. And um, what, was, what was really, uh, I, I, I knew the connection people have with the brand and with a toy store, but um, uh, I wasn't a part of Toys R Us before. I was on my previous role. I actually sold into Toys R Us, so it's an interesting role. But um, customers were just like in tears, so happy to see those store back because there's that connection to childhood, to play, to experience. And for us, I think a lot of it comes down to creating experiences that live up to people's memories and, and make them proud that like, wow, this is an experience that I'm excited to have. And Jeffrey. Jeffrey's there. We have that emotional yeah. attachment. Yeah, there Jeffrey's too. there. So in terms, so you look after Astra as an organization kind of brings together smaller toy stores. Mm -hmm. Do you welcome the re-emergence of, not the re-emergence of, because it's a different proposition, but it's Toys R Us. Oh, sure. um, you welcome them back? How does that kind of ecosystem work with small toy stores and Toys R Us? So, of course we welcome them back. Um, it's I knew you one, were gonna say that. I... It's one ecosystem, right? Um, there are multiple choices for customers. Consumers are looking for options. They don't want just one way to shop. Um, and the recognition of the importance of play, the importance of providing quality toys and games for kids and for families, that's all, always important. We also have members that are manufacturers and they're looking for more shelf space. So Toys R Us and Big Box, those are all options for getting their products um, out to consumers. Uh, to customers. So, of course, we welcome um, Toys R Us. Toys R Us has always recognized the importance of play. They've recognized the positive impact play has on children. It is uh, an aspect of play that we appreciate in our space as well. Our members are very passionate about making sure that there are quality play products, quality toys and games for kids because it's such an important aspect of child. We've definitely got to engage the kids because, you know, well, uh, 100 years ago, kids were making their own toys. Mm -hmm. And today, kids could 3D print their own toys. Well, so we go. don't engage them mm -hmm. um, and, and like, have conversations with them sure. and treat them as like mini grown-ups, which is what we, can, yeah, <laughs> we, we absolutely we should do. We cannot. Um, you, yeah, they, I, I visited a, a competitor brand with this in-store experience in London that just opened recently. Um, and it, the, the way that the adults were interacting with the brands it just it was like an entertainment it was an experience it was it was fabulous but we've um yeah we've got to deliver these kids want more yeah. than before well, yeah and, kid, and that's a good point to parents because parents want the connection too i think a lot of times people that you'll go shopping and it's a singular experience in a sense but in spaces where people are interacting parents are having conversations they're meeting people kids might be sitting down for story time parents are sitting next to each other and they're talking about things and making connections so a big part of what we're doing is how do we encourage connection and conversation between people who are coming into the store for different reasons, but making connections, not just with the kids that are playing together, but also with the, the grown-ups that are there with them too. It's kind of so that, the, ki the kid alt market as well is now, I mean, NB, NPD data was, it's 13 and a half percent of all toys that are sold um, are purchased by adults, either for themselves or for another adult. And I can't see that, that in, that's really not slowing down anytime soon. Not, not at all. You know, the, uh, the, the rise and rise of like, the board game culture and the experience culture with adults and kids alike. And there's a lot more collaboration. And parents are playing a lot more with the kids. We've kind of gone through that screen time stuff. No, it's, there's a lot of 
it's such a good time to be in the toy industry for me because people are embracing analog again and there are people wanting to come together and play together. Um, I love it. It goes even further than that, Peter. Uh, play is important across the lifespan from the beginning of life through the end of life. And if you think about some of the um, challenges that seniors have with loneliness and depression, play is one of the ways that they can make connections. It's one of the ways that they keep those, we all need to keep those neurons firing even as we age. So it's an opportunity through play for community and for uh, keeping their brains young and for connecting with one another. It's a very important aspect of, of life for children and for adults. Yeah, no, um, yeah, my, my grandmother is um, super competitive at Monopoly even now. Like she's, <laughs> she's 90 in a few weeks' time. And she, she's like, I'm always expecting her to do that Monopoly board go. flip thing. <laughs> she's, uh, yeah, yeah, she's quite close. Um, that's fascinating. I'm glad I could spend, well, let's go and spend some more time chatting okay. about stuff. But if anybody's got any questions or you want to catch us offline, um, you can get me on um, social. I'm Toyologist. And uh, Kim, David, I'd like to say thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Keith.